Rade! I tried to warn you. What are you doing? Ensuring the survival of my people. The Commonwealth is weak. It bargains with its enemies. It compromises. My people are engineered to be perfect. It was one of the mo most elaborate uh, and best fight scenes that, that I've ever been involved with. <laughs> We have my stunt double, who's a great, uh, he's a great acrobat, great martial artist, and they had him flying over rails. There's explosions. <laughs> Kevin and I seem to fight for days. <laughs> it's very powerful, a very good scene. And one of the memories that sticks in my head is um, I'm sitting at the craft table. Robert Wolf comes up. We've done probably about a half a day. He comes up to me, he goes, it's too bad we're gonna kill you, because we really like you. And I just kinda, I sort of blurt out, well, you know, you don't, you know, you can always bring me back as my own descendant. It's just kinda like a joke. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it was that or something else, or if they had plans in the future for me. I don't know how it worked out, but it worked out that I came back anyways. But I remember that day, it was kind of like, uh, but we're going to bring you back in, in a flashback. So it was kind of just blown away. Like, you know, I'd say, down. No, that's, that's funny, Steve, but, you know, but sure enough, uh, I, maybe that's how I'm here. You have a very unique opportunity to reshape the entire universe according to your own will. And this opportunity is never going to come to you again. What I was told was basically the show would probably go four or five years minimally because of Kevin's involvement. Uh, you know, as far as I was concerned, I knew that there was a few episodes that season, and, and then who knows what's going to happen, right? Uh, so no, I really, as far as I was concerned, had really not a clue. But I ended up doing, you know, some work for Tribune on other shows. You know, uh, did the Beastmaster Adventures Inc. Earth Final Conflict is how I met them, how I met Seth Howard, and um, which led to doing Andromeda. But I ended up basically doing all, all their shows. So they kind of kept me busy in between, and then they'd come back and say, you know, season two, I think I did one or two, and then season three, I did one or two, and it seemed like there, there had to be something else. I'm really glad it worked out, because it's, it's just great. It's great being so close to home. You know, you work, you go home, it's, you know, no hotel rooms, and you know, it's, it's, it's actually, it's a real, real treat. Nietzscheans don't believe in optimism. It inhibits survival. So does pessimism. The original character, season one, was Gaharis Rade. At the beginning, Dylan goes into a black hole at the end of that episode. I'm frozen in time with him, but I'm dead. He goes 300 years into the future. You meet uh, Telemachus Rade in, in an episode so called Home Fires. My ancestor, Gaharis Rade. Here on Terra, is that he's something of a hero, you know. A loyal Commonwealth officer, dead in that first terrible battle. I lost a lot of good people that day. Season four comes along and there's a, uh, uh, an incident where uh, a Commonwealth ship is under attack uh, by com other Commonwealth ships. And Dylan uh, uh, intervenes and it turns out that I'm transporting Terra Anastasia. Uh, uh, You're an embarrassment to all Nietzschean prides. I am the reincarnation of Drago Macedony. The progenitor would not shoot a blind prophet. You are what's wrong with the Nietzschean race. Selfish, self-absorbed, unaware of your own limitations. He is a Nietzschean who kind of wrestles with the fact that he's a Nietzschean, just, like, just as Geharis did. I mean, Geharis sided more with the Commonwealth, sided with with organization and development in many races. You know, the only thing that really broke his back was the Magog thing, and that just didn't make any sense. In essence, he was right. I mean, Gaharis really wasn't a, a, a bad character. He was, he was very noble and very much Commonwealth, and it really was the Commonwealth mistake to involve the Magog, because as you see what happens, little did we know, right? So Telemachus is basically running from a past. At the end of episode four, he thinks he's found harmony and peace. Is a Nietzschean Louisa who has learned success through love rather than aggression. So he finally finds somewhere that he can go, huh, okay, and I'll fight for this. I'll, uh, this is what I want. And then, of course, she dies. No! No! Ah! Ah! Totally broken now, ends up on Sifra and has nine months to basically just brood and think about things. So he doesn't really give up anymore. And 
doesn't even give up beep anymore. Um, and so what he's had time to do now is, is he, he would love to destroy himself, but because he's an Ichian, he can't. I live in the hallway of broken dreams where lost love found me through her chilly arms around me. What's the matter with you? <laughs> he's conflicted, lost, searching, you know. One of my favorites was Unconquerable Man. It was the episode where Geharis Rade, it's as if Geharis Rade won the fight with Dylan in the first episode, ends up going through the same process that Dylan does. The, the Commonwealth falls. He has to try to rebuild it, but he's not successful. And what he realizes is that he has to go back. He has an opportunity to go back and die. So as a Nietzschean, it's, it's something that's not, we're not bred to do is commit suicide. And in essence, he was committing suicide. The, the, the part of the scene preceding going into, uh, uh, going to meet myself was a, tra a scene with trance. And it was just, you know, she's just telling me, this is what you gotta do. Your life can still mean something. You still have contributions to make, but you are not the one. Then who is? I think you know who. Dylan. It was just great. The character got to sort of do a, an arc, and the arc in the character was becoming more like the Dylan character and becoming much more human. Because generally, every episode, there was four or five or six, whatever, was more the, you know, the, the warrior, the, the soldier. It was pretty much within the box. You don't get to exercise any real acting muscles. So on this one, you get to see a little bit of an arc. Now, having said all that, this season, <laughs> you know, it's just been a lot more fun. Help! 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 <laughs> because of the stuff that happens at the end of season four, I just get to become totally broken down and, you know, erratic. And, you know, whatever I do is fine because, you know, I just, I'm raw. It's much more raw, so it's a lot more fun as an actor. Um, it's been great being in the saloon. You know, a lot of drinking, a lot of whores, a lot of fighting, you know, so space western. So I've been really enjoyed. I got to kick somebody in the nuts, too. He's a big guy, though, and he had a, he had a weapon. So it's fair. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> By the end of the season, I got to kiss for a couple episodes. There's one girl. But she dies. I don't know, it's funny. I don't know what that means. And, and then this season, uh, they've, we've sort of alluded to the fact that I've been carousing, you know, with the patrons. And, and then I had an episode, the same as episode where I got to kick a guy in the nuts. I get to uh, have some warrior love and with uh, this warrior goddess thing. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, you know, we romped around a little bit, but because of time, we didn't romp around that much. They cut me, pulled me back a little, you know. I think they should throw me another bone, I don't know. I don't know, what do you think? And then, and then I'm coming with a, another back fist, which will, which will sort of bend you over a little bit, and I'm gonna grab you by the cheeks, the ones in your face, and then and just hold you up, and then I'll grab your throat. <sighs> what did you do to back a ship? Nothing. <laughs> Gotta stay in shape, stretch whenever you can. Pilates in the trailer. It's a good thing, just starting. Getting a little older, kind of stay flexible. <laughs> Working in the city where I, my family lives and where I live, you know, I did a bunch of movies just before I started as, as a as a regular on the show, and you know, it was Toronto a couple of times, and Montreal, and you know, it was kind of nice, but just being away for six weeks, four weeks at a time from your family just really, really stinks. So uh, from that perspective, it's, it's been fantastic. And then uh, as far as professionally, it's really one of the better jobs uh, that I've ever had. Most times you're on location, you're dealing with different times, you're dealing with, with the atmosphere, you're dealing with everything. Here we're in a studio, you start at seven, you're usually done at seven or eight. And uh, there's no pretension here, the cast is great, the crew's fantastic. Um, it's really the ideal job. And you know, occasionally you have a really great episode and you get, get to do some stuff, you get action, you get comedy. 
a drama. So you, you get a little bit of everything and it's all mixed into a sci-fi show. And the sci and thank God, there's many reality sci-fi TV shows yet. You know, I think that's kind of like a good thing. And, and the sci-fi fans are extremely loyal. I mean, they're, it's just, they're great. You know, I think they're the, them and the soap opera fans are some of the best fans out there, the most loyal. So I think, you know, it's one of the more ideal jobs. Like I said to you before, they should make an Andromeda film, movie. Why not?